some of us may be in danger of our Wii U literally just bricking itself for no apparent reason. And while it might seem random, it's actually because of a brand of NAND chip installed in your console. Now, this isn't the case for everyone, as Nintendo used three different suppliers for their NAND chips throughout the production of the Wii U, but the ones with the bad brand of NAND chip made the console prone to fail over time, especially after not using it for long period. And to be transparent, I'm not making this video to scare you, as it's not as bad as it sounds, but I will explain a lot more later in the video. So if you're wondering if you hit the unlucky lottery and have a bad chip? Well, today I'm going to show you multiple ways to find out, and don't worry, it does not involve taking apart your Wii U. The Wii U's were produced with a chip that was manufactured by one of three companies, Samsung, Toshiba, and Hynix. The third of that list, Hynix, is the culprit of the failing NANDs. The first way to tell if you have a vulnerable Hynix chip in your Wii U is just by looking at it. The white Wii U's with an 8GB storage were only made with Samsung and Toshiba chips, so those are typically safe from the failing NAND. However, the black Wii U's with 32GB of storage, like the ones that I own, I have multiple, those could be at risk of having a Hynix chip installed. I believe the year was 2012 where those began to be used. So if you have a white Wii, you don't have to worry about it, which is great. If you have a black Wii, turn it over to the back and check if the ports are gray like this one. If they are, then it's a good sign that it's a Samsung or Toshiba chip. However, if the ports are colored, then there's a higher chance it's a Hynix chip. And I just want to remind you that it's not the end of the world if you do have a Hynix chip. Not all of them fail. There's just been some reports of that happening with Wii U's with that chip. So this first method, it's very quick and easy, but it doesn't guarantee that you actually find out for sure. It's mainly for anyone who's planning to buy a Wii U from someone else and doesn't have the time or means to check the guaranteed way, as I will show you next. So that's what we're going to do right now. So the, the second method is guaranteed to tell you which chip your console has, but there is one requirement. It does have to be soft modded with Aroma custom firmware also known as homebrew, which is what my entire channel is based from. So if you don't know what that is or where to get started, I will have my guide linked in the top right of the screen and I'll have videos linked in the description to get you started there. So this method to find out which chip you have is through a homebrew app created by Gary Odernix, who has been a part of many developments in the homebrew community. And this app means you don't have to open up your console and physically look at the chip. And of course, I'll show you how to set it up right now and we'll see if one of my two we use has a Hynix chip. So in order to get that app that we're using, it's called Wii U Ident or Wii U Ident. I'm really not sure how to pronounce it, but it's here and this is where we get it. Gary Oden needs on GitHub, scroll down and we're just going to grab this web file. So go ahead and click that. And the reason you need Aroma custom firmware is because web files only work with Aroma. They don't work with the previous versions like Tiramisu or even older like Haxachi. So that is all you get. And now it's time to take your SD card out of your Wii U and place it into your computer. Open up your downloads and your SD card you used to mod your Wii U. I have my downloads on the left close that. And if you've set up any Wii U app, we're just going to do the same thing as before. But if you are new to this, well, we're going to go into the Wii U folder on the root of your SD card. I know I have a lot of stuff on mine, but just find your Wii U folder. Mine's down here and then your apps folder. And here are all your Wii U apps. As you can see, I got a lot of wubs. So I'm going to grab that and just place it into the folder. Make sure you don't place it into one of the folders you have on there. Just drop it into the actual folder. Press yes if Windows prompts you and drag it in. You're good to go. We can eject it and head over to our Wii U. All right, and we're over on the Wii U and you should see this icon right here, Wii U Ident. Really, if somebody knows how to properly say that, please let me know in the comments. But we'll load it up and honestly, it's, it's so streamlined, it's very easy to use and it tells you which chip you have. First off, you can go into general system information and you can see everything about it, including the production year, which I'm pretty sure 2012 and 2013 are the most common years for the heirs. But just press B back here and now we're gonna go to storage information. And this is where you see what you have. So it, under MLC, it says MMC, and then mine luckily says Samsung. So really, I don't, I don't think I really have to worry about it at all because the Hynix chips are culprit here. Now, if 
you do have Hynix, don't worry, um, it's not the end of the world, it doesn't happen to all of them, there's just a slight possibility that your Wii U will die. Wow, I didn't really put it nicely. I'm pretty sure I have a Wii U that has Hynix. I have multiple, so I'll, I'll check, I'll check. So this Wii U, I actually got at a garage sale and it obviously, as I wrote on the box, it has an error code. It doesn't have the 1303, but it does need soldering to fix. I looked into it. While we can't double check that it has Hynix through this app, there's a possibility because if we turn it over, those are colored ports. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, that those have a higher likelihood of being Hynix. So this could be Hynix. I don't know, I can't actually check it, but uh, there's a possibility. And it's a dead Wii U. I, I think I literally got it for like 30 bucks Canadian though. So it, it wasn't too bad. And it came with Mario controllers, which one of them I gave to Saucy, shout out to Saucy. He'll be in the comments. But yeah, so if you have Hynix and you have a bricked Wii U or something like that, you're not alone. And then of course I have two Wii U's here. This one is the Samsung and I will quickly check what this Wii U is, but from the back, you can see that it is, the ports aren't colored, so it's probably fine, but I'll check it anyway. All right, we switched we use, let's see. Storage information, this is also a Samsung, so I don't even get to show you a Toshiba one or a Hynix. It is definitely the easiest way to find out what you have. And if you do have a Hynix chip, now don't panic. Now this is a great time to show you a post by Gary himself, so I'm gonna switch cameras right here and this is his post saying there's a lot of misconceptions about being spread about dying we use lately and he's trying to clear some things up you can go ahead and read this but i'll recap it basically he's saying that the ones that are affected are hynix as i mentioned and that it's honestly even if you have one it's not that likely for your wii u to die so you don't have to worry too much but there are th some things we can do if you hear that keeping your wii u plugged in this won't actually do anything as gary mentioned right here if we scroll down here's a picture of the actual nand the Hynix NAND. So if you did open your, up your console, that's what you would see if you have that NAND. But the thing he said you can do best is install, I don't honestly, I don't know how to say this, but ISFS hacks is for the hacks <laughs> again if you know how to say it let me know in the comments but it's an exploit early in the system's boot chain which allows you to restore your system even if the emmc fails so that is your best option so go ahead and install it i will be making a guide on it in the future so keep an eye out for that and subscribe and over on reddit i found this post from phantom wombat mind you this is a year from a year ago but people tracking the issue still have only found less than 40 failures of the emmc now that's the only the reported so there could be more than that phantom wombat suggests that it's likely only a drop in the bucket compared to the 13 million consoles out there so really do you have to worry not really should you be concerned not really if it happens to you it that really sucks and i'm sorry if it did happen to you i don't want to downplay this at all for you but if it hasn't happened to you yet then i definitely suggest setting up isfs hacks to your system just as gary mentioned there and then he also suggests that you can replace the emmc with an SD card as well. So if, if you're interested in doing that, you can look into that. I didn't make this to scare you, but I did want you to know that there's a possibility that you might have a NAND chip that was made by a company that might have had a couple issues with a few NAND chips, and hopefully yours isn't one of them. But thank you for watching, and make sure you subscribe for more modding content, and I'll see you on the next one. Stay funky and happy modding. <laughs>